I've custom bound quite a bit of my G.I. Joe collection, and I've made some mistakes, particularly with this volume. Uh, stick around and listen to my advice on what not to do. Yo, Joe, talking comics, here's your host, it's a real American Brian. So this particular volume of my custom bind collection is a real bummer. I made some serious mistakes with this one. Uh, these may seem like obvious things, and you will laugh at my stupidity, but I thought it would be best to get them out there just in case I could help someone else avoid following in my steps and screwing up their custom bind. Uh, this volume was one that I had to track down in trade paperbacks and single issues. This is the Snake Eyes title in the IDW continuity. Um, this title changed its name three times over the course of its run. It was part of a couple different big story arcs that went throughout the G.I. Joe books that were coming out, the three different books at the time. Uh, but through a combination of trade paperbacks and single issues, I was able to get the full 21 issue run together and send it out to be bound. I was pretty proud of myself for, you know, hunting that stuff down, getting it all put together like that. But after getting it back, I realized I messed up. Uh, the first mistake I made wasn't uh, as bad. Um, when getting books custom bound, one of the advantages you have that you can remove all the ad pages that are, you know, double-sided ads anyway. And uh, if you're doing single issues, a lot of mine are trade paperbacks, so that wasn't an issue. This one has some single issues in it. And... I usually don't mind the ads. I think it's kind of cool to have like nostalgic ads in your books at times. But the way IDW typically does their ads, they have four pages, so eight pages, or four double-sided pages, I believe, at the back of each single issue, advertising books that are coming out at that time. Uh, so these would have been very easy to remove, and I should have. Uh, when reading it as a book like this in one volume, you get to the back of that issue and you're just flipping through pages needlessly. Um, it would have saved a little space, which wasn't a concern in this one, but if you are trying to get into that two-inch space, you can squeeze extra issues in by cutting out ads. So that's another advantage to doing that. Um, so this one, it was just a little annoying, and I should have caught that, and I should have removed those. Um, in future volumes that I'm prepping now to send out, I'm definitely doing that. Uh, the bigger mistake I made was not including any of the crossover issues. Um, as I mentioned, there was two different large stories that took place during this time that crossed over... Uh, the three different G.I. Joe titles that were coming out in the IDW continuity. Uh, with other big crossover stories, I've read some titles exclusively and skipped the other titles, and I was okay with that because um, in those you ha would have short recaps or you'd have a character mention something big that happened in another book. So you were still able to keep up with the story, you just didn't get all the details. Um, that is not the case with this one. Um, they were really depending on you to be reading all three titles each month. Um, so collecting them, as I did, you miss out on big chunks of the story, and there is no recap. There is no, oh, remember that time this guy became Cobra Commander? Uh, some of the stuff that's missing is conclusions to big story arcs. And I should have really custom bound the big crossover stories together separately and not worried about keeping this one title in um, one place by itself. Now... In my defense, which takes a lot because I should have definitely caught this, this is all on me. Uh, but in my defense, the IDW trade paperbacks didn't collect those crossover issues either. They kept with the same title. So even they were depending on you to be reading multiple trade paperbacks at one time. It's very confusing. I don't understand what they were thinking, so I'll let them take a little bit of the blame, but the majority of the blame is my fault. Uh, the biggest piece of advice, though, that I wish I could go back and give myself uh, before sending this out to be made bound together um, is to sit down and read everything that you're about to send out to be bound. Had I done that, I would have realized going in that this isn't going to work, the story doesn't make any sense, and I also would have cut out the ads because I would have realized how useless that is. Um, I thought it would be fun just to have it all together in one place. I collected it all, I wanted to get it bound, and I sent it out um, because I usually prefer reading Omnis and collected editions rather than a stack of single issues. But this volume is such a mess that I don't honestly see myself reading this book again. Uh, so because of my silly mistakes, I wasted a bunch of money. I encourage you to custom bind comic books if that sounds appealing to you. Um, having one-of-a-kind collections exactly how you want them to be is pretty cool. But before diving in, take your time and plan out things 
before shipping them out. Um, make sure you read through the, what you're actually getting bound and make sure it's exactly what you want. Because once it gets bound and it comes back, that's what you're going to get. But if you have any questions or want to talk about custom binding books, please leave a comment down below. I would love to talk more about this little corner of the comic collecting hobby. If you made it this far, please give this video a like. It really helps out small channels like mine. I hope I gave you something to think about at least. Um, now go out and start collecting comics to get custom bound and put together your own custom library. That was A Real American Brian. And now you know, because knowing is half the Brian.